If you mention the name, King Edward VII, to anyone who loves history, a few things may come to their minds. Some may think of the famous portrait of the king by Sir Luke Fields, where he is dressed in formal attire. Others may think of that infamous woohoo chair the king had made for his extramarital affairs. Others may think of another notable image of the king, the photograph of Edward VII on his wedding day with a beautiful young woman as his bride. Once a well-known queen, it seems like nowadays not many people talk about this charming young lady. This is the story of Queen Alexandra of the United Kingdom. Born as Alexandra Caroline Marie Charlotte Louise Julia on December 1, 1844 in Copenhagen, Denmark at the Yellow Palace. Her parents were the future King Christian IX of Denmark and his wife Louise of Hesse Castle, and Alexandra was the second of the six children born to the couple. Known in her family as Alex, the young Danish princess grew up in a very close-knit family which was unusual for many royal and noble families of the time. Due to the military salary of her father, the family lived a modest life by royal standards. The Danish royal family was close with the famous author, Hans Christian Andersen, and he would often tell stories to the children. Alexandra was very close to her younger sister, Dalmar, who would become Empress Maria Fyodorovna and the mother of Tsar Nicholas II later in life. The daughters of the future King Christian IX were taught how to dance, how to speak German, English, and French alongside their native Danish, taught how to sing, how to paint, and how to housekeep from their mother. The girls also learned about gymnastics, sports, and even taught how to swim. In 1848, when Alexandra was about four years old, King Christian VIII died and his childless son Frederick became the king. Due to succession laws, Alexandra's father became heir to the Danish throne and was given the title of Prince Christian of Denmark. Due to this elevated status, the family was gifted the sparkling Bernstorff Palace. The fairy tale of Alexandra seemed to finally be starting. For a moment, let us turn our attention to the United Kingdom, where Queen Victoria and Prince Albert are looking for a suitable bride for their son, Albert Edward, who was the Prince of Wales. The British royal couple enlisted the help of their daughter, Crown Princess Victoria of Prussia, to help find a match for the Prince of Wales. Alexandra was actually not the first choice of bride due to diplomatic issues. After all the other candidates were rejected, the young Danish royal was chosen. Alexandra was the only one to be chosen. In September of 1861, Crown Princess Victoria introduced her brother Albert Edward to Alexandra. Over a year later, on the 9th of September, 1862, Albert Edward proposed to Alexandra. A few months later on March 10, 1863, Edward and Alexandra were married in a small but beautiful wedding ceremony. While weddings are normally happy occasions and causes for celebrations, the mood of this wedding was somber. Prince Albert, Queen Victoria's beloved husband, had died on December 14, 1861 at the age of 41, and the court, especially Victoria, was still in mourning. Life would get a little happier for the newly married couple as Alexandra would give birth to the couple's first child, a son named Albert Victor, on January 8, 1864. In total, Edward and Alexandra would have six children in total. Albert Victor, George V, Louise the Princess Royal, Princess Victoria, Queen Maud of Norway, and Prince Alexander John. As a mother, Alexandra was very hands-on with her children and preferred to raise them herself rather than leave her children to be raised by governesses and tutors. The new Princess of Wales also had a wide range of hobbies, such as hunting and ice skating. Even though a rheumatic fever gave Alexandra a limp, she did not let that stop her from enjoying herself with her family. Alexandra also took on many public engagements such as attending opening ceremonies, took part in charities, and visited hospitals. Similar to the great popularity of her sister, Maria Fyodorovna to the Russian people, Alexandra was loved by the British people. The diplomatic prospects of Alexandra's family also began to rise. On November 15, 1863, King Frederick VII died and Alexandra's father became King Christian IX of Denmark. Alexandra's brother would become King George I of Greece in the same year. 
On the terms of her marriage, Alexandra and Edward's marriage appeared happy. In reality, the marriage of Edward and Alexandra was the polar opposite of Queen Victoria's and Prince Albert's marriage. Albert was a devoted husband to Victoria and was faithful to her. Edward on the other hand had dozens of extramarital affairs with various women over the years. Edward even had a special chair made to aid him during those extramarital affairs. Alexandra, like many royal spouses before her, seems to have accepted her husband's affairs as part of everyday life. The life of the Princess of Wales was slowly turning from a fairy tale into a nightmare. It is said that death is the end of one story, and the beginning of another. In the 1890s, this would be true for the future of the British monarchy. On January 14, 1892, just a few weeks after his 28th birthday, Albert Victor died of pneumonia. Albert Victor's family was heartbroken, especially his mother Alexandra, who never recovered from the loss of her eldest son. Due to the long reign of her mother-in-law, Alexandra was Princess of Wales for 38 years. Her husband Edward at the time had been the longest-serving Prince of Wales. King Charles III eventually became the longest-serving Prince of Wales during the long reign of his own mother, Queen Elizabeth II. As Queen Consort, Alexandra took her husband's place if royal appearances were needed at events, due to his health catching up with him after years of excess. Queen Victoria in her lifetime, spoke about Alexandra's devotion to her royal duties. Queen Victoria said, to spare me the strain and fatigue of functions. She opens bazaars, attends concerts, visits hospitals in my place, she not only never complains, but endeavors to prove that she has enjoyed what to another would be a tiresome duty. Alexandra was wary of possible German expansion, but her worries fell on deaf ears. The new king Edward VII and his ministers also barred the queen from reading briefing papers and prevented her from going on trips abroad to stop the queen from having any possible influence. Queen Alexandra continued to pour her heart into her charity work. King Edward VII's reign would last for less than a decade. The aging king was known for his heavy smoking, as he smoked about 20 cigarettes and 12 cigars a day. Alexandra also had some health problems of her own, such as her deafness and her limp. Her popularity was also not as strong as it had once been in her youth, as she and her husband were booed by nationalists in Ireland but she carried on her royal duties with a smile, even when times were tough. In April of 1910, Queen Alexandra was on a visit to her brother King George I of Greece when she had to hurry home, since her husband was in poor health. In May, Edward was struck by several heart attacks, but he did not want to retire for the evening. He said, no, I shall not give in. I shall work to the end. During one of the moments the king was awake, his son George told his father that his racehorse had won at Kempton Park. The king replied, yes, I have heard of it. I am very glad. At 11.45 p.m., King Edward VII died on May 6, 1910 at the age of 68, and his son George was now King George V. After the death of her husband, Alexandra continued to devote herself to her charity work. Her kindness was well known, and she would help anyone without a second thought. Alexandra's fears of German expansion eventually came true as World War I engulfed the globe. Alexandra was also worried about her sister, Maria Fyodorovna, after the bloody Russian Revolution and begged her dear sister to come to the United Kingdom. As her life drew to a close, Alexandra's health continued to decline. On November 20, 1925, Queen Alexandra died of a heart attack at the age of 80. Through her son George, she is the great-grandmother of the late Queen Elizabeth II. Queen Alexandra was buried next to her husband, King Edward VII, in St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle on November 28, 1925, just a few days before her 81st birthday. The life of Queen Alexandra had come to a sorrowful conclusion. Queen Alexandra was mourned deeply by the British people. In many ways, Queen Alexandra experienced life events that were very similar to the life of her sister, Empress Maria Fyodorovna. Queen Alexandra's eldest son died, 
and his fiancée married her other son, similar to what happened to Maria Fyodorovna's own marriage, where she married her late fiancé's brother, Tsar Alexander III. Both sisters would lose their eldest sons and would never recover from the losses. The sisters also lost little baby boys. Perhaps now in heaven, both Alexandra and Maria Fyodorovna are at peace with their families. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and comment. If you would like to see more history and gaming related content, then please subscribe to Sweet History Tea, a channel full of random facts and lots of sparkles. Don't forget to click on the bell icon so you never miss any of my videos. Until next time. Thank you.